Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. I was recently inspired by European astronauts asking the European Space Agency to develop an independent crewed vehicle for Earth orbit and I decided to pull up the designs of the Hermes space plane and sort of adapt it to the Ariane 6 with some changes that I thought would be appropriate. But I was also led to do this because I had an idea for how to disrupt the aerodynamics of the space plane so it doesn't imbalance the Ariane 6 rocket by using a certain kind of fairing over the space plane. And I realized that abort motors could be fit, fitted into that fairing. And here we finally get to test those abort motors. Uh, a little bit sloppy there, but you get the picture. It separates off. Uh, the fairings contain the abort motors and then separate off and then the space plane can do its space plane thing, hopefully, and gain control. Sorry for the lack of sound. There was a little bit of an issue with recording. This was from a live stream, uh, but there will be sound later in the video. Anyway, but uh, here I gain control over it. Now, we're launching from Kuru, and there aren't apparently any good islands to land at outside of Kuru. So uh, a splashdown, uh, some sort of maybe parachuting out might be necessary, I don't know. But in any case, we can get away from the rocket with the abort motors. And the abort motors with the size that I've made them definitely have enough space for the kind of propellant that it needs. So that whole system could work. And so this could be an extra safe method. Well, okay, except for that part. Uh, I overstressed it uh, coming down the way I did. I will make adjustments. Uh, we are testing for a reason because all these things it's tricky to do this. There's the pad abort situation, for instance, and that, well, the thing is, on a pad abort, that is, if there's a problem with the rocket right away on the launch pad, then if we abort, do we get to enough speed for the space plane to actually land? Not really. It does uh, tumble like that, but there's a little way to fix that because there's still a little bit of aerodynamics involved. And yeah, it's just too slow. It's obviously stalled out and everything. So I decided to fix that by putting parachutes on the fairing. Uh, so we put two parachutes there. That adds extra mass. We're adding a lot of extra mass here. Uh, last time on the test, we barely got to orbit. We didn't even have landing gear fitted for that test. And now I've separated off the SRBs inside the abort system to make sure that they can work properly. So that's one complication. And now I've added parachutes. And there's actually an additional decoupler necessary to make this happen. So that's another mass, about 0.7 tons. So it's all very heavy. And we will need to retest whether we can actually get into orbit. But you can see uh, now with the parachutes there, the, uh, the pad abort can actually work. And actually we can extend the landing gear because the rear landing gear, the main landing gear, is forward of the fairing just barely. We could probably move the main landing gear forward a little bit more or move the start of the fairing back a little bit. But yeah. So it is possible to extend the landing gear and save the heat tiles at the bottom of the Hermes space plane as well. So uh, I continue to uh, try to do abort testing at the high G situation, not highest dynamic pressure. But the dynamic pressure and the high G situation probably aren't too different in this case. And unlike the SpaceX abort test with the Dragon, I can't turn off the SRBs, of course. Uh, so I just leave everything running and we have to abort with everything running on the core. So that is an important point. You can't just shut off the rocket. So we had, had to have enough uh, thrust to weight ratio to get away safely. And this time that worked out a little bit better and or cleaner anyway. And I brought it down at a higher angle of attack so that it wouldn't be coming in so fast. And that was safer. The problem is we still don't have anywhere to land like this. So maybe jettisoning the fairing with the parachutes is a bad idea. We could just, and now we have sound. <laughs> um, I found out that the recording wasn't working right. But uh, the maybe we could just keep the fairing and the parachutes the way we did for the pad abort and splash down with the parachutes instead. Otherwise, this is coming in way too fast. Actually, oddly enough, this uh, managed to splash down slower than I thought it would. I was expecting about 75 to 80, but I was testing its stall speed here, and it managed to do it lower, but that would throw me off because later on, it doesn't manage to do this. It stalls sooner, and we'll see that uh, closer to the end of the video. So, 
Uh, this is a peculiar thing. It's, I didn't think it should be able to do this. Uh, get down to like 55, 60 ish meters per second before splashing down safely. And later on, it doesn't. <laughs> so I don't know what to make of that. But anyway, off we go again. It certainly has lift on the wings. Uh, it is doing lifty things, and but it does not have infinite lift. And off go the boosters there. Now, with all the extra mass, this one, we are testing whether it can get to orbit. That's important. We've added a lot of mass. Can it actually get to where it's supposed to go? Especially since we're going to the International Space Station inclination. We're going to 51.6 degree inclination out of Kuru. So that takes extra delta V. Uh, if we were just going into an equatorial orbit, that would be much easier from Kuru. So... Here, uh, well, that's worrisome. The problem is, uh, and I don't realize it until uh, the next launch, I think, the SRBs that are inside the fairing that serve as the launch escape system, their colliders are a little bit too long. And actually, the SRB's uh, model itself is too long. It needs to be shortened a little bit. It's got way more than the volume necessary for the solid propellant. So if we can shorten it, uh, that would be better. Right now it's getting in the way of the body of the Hermes space plane. Anyway, uh, so we brought it down. The reason being that we couldn't get to orbit. We didn't have enough time to burn with the upper stage. Da Vinci engine still didn't have enough time. So we ended up re-entering. This uh, would be a different kind of abort, except this one was transatlantic. Uh, we were trying for transatlantic, but we didn't get all the way across because we didn't reach Europe. Uh, so this... Yeah, well... Here, I'm trying to take control from Smart ASS there because it was wiggling too much. But when I take control, it just goes out of control. So uh, I decide that maybe it would be better not to try and take control until after it got below Mach 1. <laughs> Judging from that, we took control basically during the transonic region. There was too, not, too much dynamic pressure there and it just ripped apart. Which just shows that it can rip apart, by the way. I mean, it's worth pointing out. Uh, all of this can go horribly wrong. It's not like yeah, this is some sort of invincible little space plane. Okay, off go the boosters. Uh, speaking of which, this is the one where I find out that uh, SRB colliders may be detrimental. Yeah. So, I have to restart the game with the colliders fixed. This all being during the live stream, but I managed it pretty quickly. And off we go again trying to make orbit. Again, we're just trying to make orbit with the additional mass that we have added to the system. And one thing we could do is just add two more boosters, because Ariane 6 can carry four boosters instead of two. And But I wanted to make sure that this was as cheap as possible. And so instead of doing that, I underfueled the upper stage, since the upper stage is causing us too much trouble, uh, needing such a long burn time. One thing to do is just to underfuel the upper stage to see if we can get to orbit like that. It's weird to be able to get to orbit with less delta V, but because of the thrust weight ratio, that's how it is. After all, the upper stage is optimized for geosynchronous satellites, not for this purpose at all. So, for a low Earth orbit, underfueling is best, and we do make it. So, there was another time that we just barely didn't make it, and we made it all the way across Europe. That was an very convenient, uh, but yeah, uh, the whole transatlantic abort thing is very sensitive to exactly where you end up not having any more power. <laughs> anyway, so we do make orbit this time, and uh, Hermes gets to complete orbit. We deliberately uh, ended the second stage short of orbit so that we could complete orbit with the Hermes and its little thrusters. These are supposed to be Berta engines. They are going to be making them for the for the space tug on top of Ariane 6 anyway, so we just have two of the same engine that they're making for that, and that would be the most convenient thing. Everything I'm doing here is I'm deliberately trying to make it as convenient as possible for European Space Agency to actually do this. We overshoot Kuru, unfortunately, on the way back. I haven't brought this down before, so I didn't know where exactly to do the retro burn. But in fact, uh, I realized that maybe it can fit inside of the Airbus Beluga. The Airbus Beluga uh, diameter is 7.04 meters. This was designed for 7 meters, so it can fit into a 7 meter diameter. Um, Good luck. <laughs> so, you know, you can transport it like that. You don't have to put it on the back of anything. You can put it inside the Beluga without taking off the wings, potentially. 
So, another little bit of convenience. You're using the light for Ariane 6, you've got launch abort situations. Come on, come on, you can do this. Anyway, we, we don't quite make uh, Kuru, obviously, so we have to splash down. And this time, uh, there it decides to stall on me early, basically. So, yeah, that was weird. I did not expect that, but actually it stalled where I thought it would stall. It's just that the previous time it didn't stall there. Anyway, more work needs to be done, but we did a lot of testing and a lot of fixes during the live stream, and... Well, it's looking like a neat little thing. So, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.